On the basement of the sweet will of our Gurudev, we will read again quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita. In Shri Shri Vilap Kuzumanjali, deep connections, and we will go on from verse number 40 in Vilap Kuzumanjali. So verse number 40, uh, I will read the verse and a part of the wonderful uh, quotes and explanations of Srila Ananda Das Babaji. And herein, in this explanation from Srila Ananda Das Babaji, are a lot of quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially here in this verse now. So, we have a lot to read. O Devi, Goddess, when will I decorate your teeth with reddish lines, making them look just like pearls with lines of ruby on them? O oh, Devi, Goddess, when will I decorate your teeth with reddish lines, making them look just like pearls with lines of ruby on them? What a wonderful picture! Pearls and lines of rubies in between. Trying to describe Radharani's teeth. And beginning with O Devi, Goddess. Goddess is not Aishwarya Bhav here. It's the Goddess of Love. She's so beautiful, so wonderful. I can just call her Goddess. Notes. The stream of Sri Raghunath's transcendental visions flows on. This time he serves Swamini's row of teeth, saying, O oh Goddess, when will I decorate your teeth with reddish lines, making them look just like pearls with lines of ruby on them. Sri Raghunath's heart is filled with an amazing eagerness to serve his Swaminiji. Just as food does not taste sweet when one is not hungry, the flavor of devotional service is not astonishing when there is no eagerness in the devotee's heart. Swamini stood behind Raghunath to relish the sweetness of his eager and earnest devotion. She did not show herself in front of him. So now comes the quote. The Lord enjoys the eagerness of his devotees Bhaktera Prema Vikara Deki Krishnera Chamatkara 
Krishnayara Napoya Anta Keva Chara Ara Chaitanya Charit Amrita Krishna is astonished when he sees the devotees loving transformations. Even Krishna cannot find the limit of their loving ecstasy. What to speak of ordinary living beings? Therefore, Swamini increases the ocean of Raghunath's Brahma by making him more eager. Sri Raghunath's heart is very eager to attain the personal service of Sri Radha's lotus feet. By crying in a heart-rending way for Swamini, he causes Sri Rupa Goswami's heart to melt. Therefore, Sri Rupa Goswami ended his Dana Keli Kaumudi with the following prayer for Raghunath's sake. O Madhava, my friend Raghunadas has given up all other activities and is now living in a cottage on the bank of Radhakund very anxious to exclusively serve you and Sri Radhika. You always cast your merciful glance on those who live in Vrindavan and you fulfill all the desires. So please make the tree of his aspirations bear fruit soon. So I think we have to make a little break here because there are already so many very deep and inspirative points. And you are all invited to share on the subject. So it is said, Krishna is astonished when he sees the devotee's loving transformations. And even he cannot find a limit to their loving ecstasy. Actually, this is also one point why he came. He wanted to taste that. Who is the greatest devotee of him? He wanted to taste that ecstasy Radharani feels when she serves him. And he also wanted to taste the ecstasy of the kinkery, the manjaris, when they serve Radharani. To taste that, he came himself. So he is astonished, greatly astonished, when he sees how such persons like Ratimanjari are serving in such an astonishing way. with astonishing eagerness.
So Sri Raghunath's heart is so eager to attain the personal service of Sri Radha's lotus feet. So eager that even Sri Rupa Goswami is praying for him in the end of his Dana Keli Kamudi. What a mercy! He's praying for his friend, O oh, Madhava. My friend Raghunadas has given up all other activities and is now living in a cottage on the bank of Radhakun. Very anxious to exclusively serve you and Sri Radhika. You always cast your merciful glance on those who live in Brindavan and you fulfill all their desires. So please make the tree of his, Raghunath's, aspirations bear fruit soon. So this is a wonderful example of the relationship between Rupa and Raguna. He's saying, my friend, and praying for him, not for himself, Praying for Raghunadas because he sees how eager he is to serve Radharani's lotus feet. Isn't that astonishing? Even Krishna is astonished. And who can astonish him? Radhe Radhe Sunidididi. Oh, beautiful. The love between all of them, isn't it? Yes. And it's so inspiring how, you know, Krishna is astonished and Swamini is increasing uh, Raghunath's praying. And I'm just preparing a verse for tomorrow's Prema Bhakti Chandrika, where it says also in the purport, that this uh, is the mercy that they are giving this to us. You know, it's sometimes when there's written about greed, then I, I think I have to do something. But actually, they are waiting uh, for us to have the feelings and they will increase the feelings because they have this uh, close feelings for us. And sometimes I forget this because. I am uh, still so very impersonal that I always think I have to do all the work. <laughs> but they love us. <laughs> and then it's so sweet how Rupa Goswami is praying for his disciple. And that is also our hope that our Gurudev will pray for us. And that is so sweet that we want to increase our relationships among each other. It's so powerful when we pray for each other. Maybe we cannot pray on the level of Rupa Goswami, of course not. But prayer, always Baba says, prayer unshackles the grace. Prayer opens the mercy. Prayer opens the... Uh, 
you know, the blockages. And you no, know, Rupa Goswami was writing this prayer for Raghunath. And isn't that sweet how, how close they were? These are real good examples of how deep the relationships are. Writing books and prayers and um, also another thing I was I was feeling very strongly was the happiness of Rupa Goswami melting his heart how Raghunath is crying. And then I felt I maybe I cannot cry so much yet. I'm not so melted. But at least I, I uh, pray in my own little ways, internal ways, and beg. And, and uh, I, I feel that also the, 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 the teacher is very happy. The guru, Guru Mantra, is very happy when the shishya, the disciple, has a melted heart. And that's why Rupa Goswami was writing this prayer. He was so melted by the feelings of his own disciple. And that I always like to meditate on this because it's, uh, it's a very uh, intense and intimate relationship. And sometimes the people, they say about these Zooms, ah, it's always the same, it's so boring, I have no inspiration. But really I cannot understand it because so many feelings are flowing here and then also Gurudev is happy when we are sharing feelings and uh, just by seeing this eagerness Gurudev's heart will melt isn't that a good feeling <laughs> I also want to melt my Gurudev's heart by hook or by crook I you know I want to that he also feels that I feel for them, for him, for, for Swamini. I want him to see that with my my little endeavors that are nothing. But what can what else can I do? Flapping like a bird who cannot fly but wants to fly. The bird will fly for sure, <laughs> but it takes a time. So I feel this is very inspiring. To feel the relationship between Rupa and Raghunath. And I feel that also Rupa Goswami, his eagerness is so strong. There's the story that once they thought he was already left the body and they put the cotton in front of his nose when he was in lying in one of his ecstasies of separation and the cotton was like inflaming. It became fire. So this is an example, a very, a very, uh, uh, how do you say, famous example of the deep feelings of Rupa Goswami. He had so much fire in his heart and we can feel it also. And so he was the teacher of Raghunath and Raghunath was more water. <laughs> he was so much in his feelings that he was crying all the time. So we can see when, when the Gurudev also feels us and our eagerness, even though we are like a baby stumbling and, you know, not being able to do anything much. But these feelings and the eagerness, they feel it, Gurudev feels it and also reciprocates with that. And so much so when Gurudev reciprocates, like Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari, then also Swamini and Mohan. So I like it. It's all like a circle of love, right, Goravani? Yes, it's, it's so a sweet. wonderful circle of love. And you underlined actually the sentence that just as food does not taste sweet, when one is not hungry, the flavor of devotion, of service is not astonishing when there is no eagerness. So then you may say, oh, it's so boring, again and again the same. But if you are hungry, you will not say again, oh, the same. No, you will eat and relish it when there is hunger. And the hunger is given by the one who is very hungry. 
like Gurudev is always giving us prasadam, isn't it? Usually when we just ate and we go there and we are filled up and then he wants to give us some Mahaprasad. Why you don't eat? Eat! <laughs> He's making us again hungry, although we just ate. And like the bird, actually it was such a nice example you gave, it's, it's, it inspired me. Um, like the small bird who wants to fly, it sees actually the grown-up that they fly and that's why he starts to meditate. Oh yes, I also want to fly one day. And the merciful thing is that the birds also meditate that the small bird will fly one day. So Gurudev is meditating on our crowman, that we crow, that we will fly one day. He is meditating on that and this is actually giving this vibration, this help. It will help us. His meditation, his prayers for us. And this is the astonishing love. A person who has love sees always the good thing in you. In the material world it's opposite. We always see the bad thing in others because it's the bad thing in us we see in others. But if you are a pure soul, you cannot see bad things outside because inside you are you are so pure, you want to serve only, so you see it also in others. You see the reflection of your own prema in other persons. So you give light to that. And in this way you give light to that, it will grow in their heart and in your heart. And this is a very wonderful such a mercy. In this way Rupa Goswami sees the good in Raghunath and prays for him. With love steeped minds and eyes the Raga Nuga devotees should see and relish the picture drawn with bhava of the intense suffering the maidservant goes through day and night when she is separated from her beloved mistress. How much relish and how many hundreds of different moods are revealed in these lamentations of separation can be learned from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lamentations in the Gambira pastimes. So here comes the second quote in this verse. Chaitanya Chart Amita Antalila 17. Korite Aitche Vilap Utilo Udvega Bhav Mone Kahonahi Alambana Udvega Vishada Mati Atsukye Trasa Triti Smriti Nana Bhavera Hoylo Milan. While Mahaprabhu lamented in this way, agitation and ecstasy awoke in his heart. And he could not find any support or hold in his mind. Different ecstasies like eagerness, Lamentation, fear, attention, complacency and 
remembrance met in his heart. It was in the ecstasy of Sri Radha that all these sanctuary bhavas arose in the heart of the Lord, who is known as Bhavanidi, the ocean of transcendental ecstasies. This is also called Bhava Shabhaya or a clashing of different contradicting emotions. Just as a vision of Krishna appears in his mind, the strong eagerness to attain him conquered all the other feelings and took place like a king on the throne of the Lord's heart. So it's a wonderful description trying to give us a picture of what happened inside Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. First of all, it is said it was in the ecstasy of Sri Radha that all these sanctuary bhavs arose in his heart, who himself is known as Bhavanidhi. He is the ocean of bhav. the ocean of transcendental ecstasies. But what happens here is different waves from different sides are clashing into another. You know, sometimes we see on the ocean when there are so many rifts and big stones and the waves are coming with full power and wind is there, and the waves are going back and clashing with the other waves we are just coming, and then it makes vroom, and it's going from left to right and from right to left and going up and exploding. It's a picture for us like this. It was in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. All these different bhavas clashed into another, contradicting emotions. But still, in that state of mind, the feelings who conquer everything take a place like a king on the throne. of the Lord's heart. His highly developed eagerness conquered all other soldiers of ecstasy and an uncontrollable desire arose in the kingdom of his mind. Then he sadly rebuked his own mind. Mana mora vama dina jala vina yeno mina Krishna vina kshane mori yaya Madura hasya vadane Mana netra rasayane Krishna trishna triguna padaya Without Krishna, my poor mind will die within a moment, just like a fish out of water. Krishna's sweetly smiling face, which is like a reviving elixir for the mind and eyes, make my thirst for Krishna, double. 
Ha ha Krishna Prana Dana Ha ha Padma Lochana Ha ha Divya Sadguna Sagara Ha ha Shyama Sundara Ha ha Pitambara Dhara Ha ha Rasa Vilasa Nagara O Krishna, treasure of my heart, O lotus-eyed one, O ocean of divine qualities, O Shyam Sundara, O wearer of the yellow dhoti, O hero of the Rasa Leela, where should I go to find you? Tell me, and I will go there. Saying this, Mahaprabhu began to run. Swarup got, got up and brought the Lord back on his lap. Then Swarup brought the Lord back to his own place and seated him there. So, what a scene! What a wonderful scene! And how we can see it from the point of view of a kinkari. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radharani. She is in ecstasy. She wants to run out. No eyelids. No, no Shringara Ras ended. We are just in it. And she wants to run for him. So we stop her, bring her back. <laughs> it's the ecstasy of Radharani who wants to run for her beloved. And we can hear Radharani cry for her beloved. Gurudev, maybe you want to share something on this with us. So we can see that Swarup is with him and, sh and he has to act like a manjuri. Bring Radharani back. Give her peace. It's the savor of a kinkari from our point of view. Others may have an other view. Because Srila Raguna Das Goswami is the receptacle of Mahaprabhu's full grace, different waves of Bhav, headed by eagerness, are seen to arise in him also. In a transcendental vision, Sri Raghunada says, Devi, Tulasi sees how much Srimati's sweetness increases because she awoke the remembrance of the Lila Rasa in her heart while putting the musk drop on her chin. Hence, she calls her Devi. Devi Kohe Tyottamana Parama Sundari. Again, a quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Devi means effulgent, 
and most beautiful girl. So here we can see Tulasi will now draw red lines on Swamini's teeth. She is still doing her seva, Sringara seva. Srimati holds her left hand on Srimati's head and slightly lifts her moon-like face holding a brush in her right hand. Tulasi makes red lines on Srimati's white teeth with deep concentration. So again we get a picture, she's holding like this and drawing the T's with red lines and meditating. And this is the wonderful thing, what she's meditating about we will hear now. Your teeth are like, are just like pomegranate seeds. We, na we know pomegranate seeds. Reddish looking like teas when you look from one side. And when the light is going on it in the middle it seems white. A glancing white. And this pomegranate seeds that will attract the parrot from Vrindavan. Their bright effulgence will destroy the darkness of his beautiful. Your teeth are, oh, sorry. Darkness of his lonely despair. Seeing the red lines on Srimati's teeth, Tulasi is astonished. And she says, Aha! How beautiful your teeth are! They will just Increase the greed of the parrot from Vrindavan. If he can enjoy this, then all my endeavors are successful. No wonder that even Krishna is astonished by such a seva. No wonder that he is astonished. The kinkari, through her meditation, is giving Radharani again and again the feeling, oh, your beloved will come and he will react. And he will enjoy that. Your teeth are like pomegranate and the parrot will come and eat it. And then my seva will be perfect. What a way the kinkari is giving a wonderful, such a sweet vision what will happen. And in this way, the kinkari controls the mind of Radhika, that the mind stays calm. She will not run out without finishing the seva, like Mahaprabhu above it was mentioned. When these waves are clashing into each other, 
and the feelings are very strong and very high. So what a wonderful seva, no wonder that even Krishna is astonished. Could he do it like that? No. He himself admits, no. Even I cannot do such a seva. What a mercy Mahaprabhu is giving us. He is giving us something which he himself is astonished when he sees that we will do it. Isn't that amazing? All this is the service of Mahabhav and can only be understood through Mahabhav. Where are the insignificant living entities and where is that Mahabhav, the essence of love of God? But now, in this particular age of Kali, the afflicted souls have become so fortunate to enter into this kingdom of Mahabhav which is otherwise difficult of access. By the special mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, being empowered by Mahaprabhu, the Goswamis have revealed this kingdom. And the only way to get the great fortune of relishing Swamini's devotional service is to follow in their footsteps. Rasa can only be understood through personal experience and it can only be attained by the mercy of Rasic devotees. The desires Lila Kata, the desired Lila Kata, talks about Radha and Krishna's pastimes, can not be done with others than with Rasika devotees. The desired Lila Kata cannot be done with others than with Rasika devotees. It's such an important point. We are so lucky that we have this association. It's undescribable fortune. It's so rare. If you put one little stick in Asia into the ocean, and another little stick in America in the ocean. The chance that these two little sticks meeting on the vast ocean, this is the chance you have to have such Rasika. Exchange like here. It's nice when we are conscious about this. 
because then we will overlook some things we may not like in other persons. What's that? It's just like it's raining outside. Can I then not go out? Yes, I can. Oh, it's not 25 degrees outside. I don't go out. To have this Rasika exchange here is so wonderful. We should oversee so many things. Because what it gives our heart is much, much, much more treasure than anything else. Even the Lord himself is very greedy to taste these topics with the Rasika devotees. Even the Lord himself is very greedy to taste these topics with the Rasika devotees. Mahaprabhu told Sri Ramananda Roy, to me, ami nila chale rahibo eka sange sukke kataibo kala krishna katarange. Another quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita. You and I will stay together at Puri and blissfully spend the time speaking about Krishna. The Acharyas are extraordinary knowers of the Ras and by associating with their Vani one associates with them directly and by associating with their Vani one associates with them directly. So it's not just that we associate, we have association with this Goswamis, with this Kinkaris. We associate with them directly. We should be aware. If we like to be happy, then we should be aware. Isn't that a wonderful situation for us? The Goswamis are gone, really? Are they gone? Are the Leelas gone? Is this a past time? Gurudev always says so wonderful. Is it a past time? No, it happens right now. Is Raghunath gone? No, he's there. Is Rupa gone? No, he's there. Is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gone? No, he is there. He is in the Leela and we are with him. We are with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Goswamis right now. And we are not in the material world. We are right now in the spiritual realm. together with our Guru Mandari, together with Rupa Mandari, together with Tulasi Mandari. Together with our Swamini. And 
she is together with her beloved. May they meet or not. Relishing their sweet words in the company of like-minded saintly Rasika devotees is both the means and the goal. Again, what a wonderful sentence. Relishing their sweet words in the company of like-minded saintly Rasika devotees is both the means and the goal. How we can understand that if we are not with them right now? Then it wouldn't be the goal. We are with them right now. For the yogis, the Lord said this in Bhagavad Gita 6.10. The yogi always remains alone with himself in a lonely place, controlling his senses and his mind, free from desires and not talking anything for himself. In the Sankhya Darshan there is a verse saying, when you live with many people together, anger and conflicts will arise and the resultant quarrel will ruin your yoga practice. Just as the maiden's bangles will always jingle as long as she moves her hands and as long as she wears even more than one bangle on each breast. But when the Lord discusses the devotional practice of the devotees, he says, My devotees have given their minds and their hearts to me. They converse about me with each other and always enlighten each other. This keeps them very happy and satisfied. Tulasi is the embodiment of deep love and affection, and she is immersed in the flavors of the devotional service of Maha, Bhavamai Radhika. Jai Shri Radhe. What wonderful quotes. So in verse number 41, there is of course Another statement, a quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. I will first read about the connection and then comes the quote.
In a transcendental revelation, Sri Raghunath says, Ayi Gangea Gatri, O oh, golden limped girl, when can I color your nectarian, bimba fruit like lips? with lipstick made of cateshu scented with nice fresh camphor. Sri Rata's lips are naturally reddish. So why do they still need lipstick? For this one must know what's on the mind of the Saviour the worshipable deity. Sri Rata is full of Mahabhav. It is natural for her to make Krishna relish Sringara Rasa. Now comes the quote Krishna ke koraya shyamaras madupan nirantara purna kore krishnera sarvakam Chaitanya Charit Amrita She makes Krishna drink the honey drink of shyamaras erotic flavors and she always fulfills all of Krishna's desires. So that's another wonderful connection for us. Because who is helping? in Sringara Ras. Swamini is making Krishna relish Sringara Ras. So Swamini is handing the seva of the Kinkari to him. making it even more sweet, more intense for both sides, more for Krishna and more for the Kinkari. What a wonderful exchange The kinkari wants to serve that the taste of Radha and Krishna gets more. Radha wants to serve Krishna and the kinkari that this taste gets more. And Krishna wants to serve both. Everyone wants to serve and everyone is giving more ecstasy. In this way, the ocean of rasa is again and again getting bigger waves and more big waves and more waves clashing into each other. She makes Krishna drink the honey drink of Shyamaras and she always fulfills all of Krishna's desires. The Goswamis prayed to Sri Radha, Please 
personally teach me how to serve you more expertly. I worship Sri Radhika, who considers the tip of Sri Hari's two nails millions of times more dear than her own life, who teaches all the blissful, fickle-eyed gopis expertise in arts, and who is very famous. The practicing devotee should always think, is she accepting the service that I offer to her or not? I am only doing bhajan because it gives me personal happiness. I am doing my quota, nothing more. If I don't give myself a certain quota, I won't do anything. But this is not the natural beauty of bhajan. Bhajan is beautiful when you feel some want, some void, I have got my meals, I am healthy, everything is okay. If you think like this, your bhajan will be lifeless and mechanical. How many worldly things like profit, adoration, distinction, money and fame a person like me misses? But I never miss Radharani at all. But the great devotee's thirst for bhajan can never be quenched. Just like the thirst of water of someone who suffers from cholera can never be quenched. So Srila Ananda does in his merciful explanation here is actually describing my situation, not his. I don't feel that this is his situation. But a devotee like him feels like that. Where in my case I don't feel like this, but it is like this. <laughs> Unfortunately. So if you want to add something, please, whenever you like, please forgive me, I'm just going on here and 
just flow and but if you want to add something please anytime there's another wonderful quote in verse number 46 of Shishivilab Kusumanjali. It's about the Seva. Swamini is cooking some sweets. For Krishna. Swamini puts all the preparations on golden blades and covers them with sheets. She has full faith that Tulasi and the other maid servants will feed Krishna as if she herself is doing it. Matvidhanam Nija Sakinam means your girlfriends of whom I am one. The practicing devotee should also immerse himself in that ras. Srila Narutam Das Taku sings Dehena Koriho Asta. Don't place your trust in the material body. Trust should be placed in the spiritual body. I am your maidservant. What a beautiful introduction. It's such a wonderful scene. Radharani has made some sweets for her beloved. All her preparation she's handing to Tulasi and other maidservants. And they will bring it. They will bring it to her beloved, but not just bring it. They will not just bring the sweets. They will bring the whole mood, the whole seva mood, the full seva mood of Radharani they will bring to him. Her full service, all her feelings, everything they will bring. Because Radharani has full faith, full trust, in her maid servants. She is looking at them in her eyes before she they went. And she is giving them from eyes to eyes the information of her heart in the hearts of the Kinkaris. And when Krishna will see these eyes, he will read the heart of Radhika. And the maidservant will feed Krishna with the sweets and he will enjoy it like Radhika would feed him. Because the kinkaris are trained like that when Radharani cannot do it herself, they will do it for her. Not because of Krishna, only because of Radha. But still, Krishna will think, Oh, Radharani is feeding me. Oh, my beloved is giving me this sweet in my mouth. He will feel like this. What a wonderful seva these kinkaris are doing. It is just like Radharani herself is doing this seva.
this can only be on the base of full, complete faith, transcendental faith. And this is the theme here. Don't place your trust in the material body. And we all have this experience. We placed so many times our faith and trust in some material bodies and always happened the same. That's why it's very intelligent to not do it anymore. If you want to invest your trust, do it in the spiritual body. I am the kinkari of Swamini. Yes, it may not feel like this yet. The mind will say, you are nuts. You are just a beginner. Yes, it's true. You're useless. Yeah, maybe all this is true. But anyway, I don't have faith in me. I have faith in Swamini's mercy. I don't have any faith in my qualities. I have faith that Swamini's mercy is so big that even a nut like me will come back to her. And this is the greatness of Swamini and not mine. I'm so proud because of her, because she is so wonderful. It's not the ingredients who make the sweet so relishable for Krishna. It's Radharani's Mahabhav. It's not the sugar. It's not the butter. Yes, the butter is made from gopis. There's already something inside, but it's not the butter in the material sense. It's the love, the Mahabhav, which is inside. So I may be, as an ingredient, completely useless. But Swamini's Mahabhav makes me useful. Swamini's mercy makes me useful. I am your maidservant. What a wonderful introduction. Krishna Dasa Abhimane Ye Ananda Sindhu Koti Brahma Sukha Nahe Tara Eka Bindu Here's the quote. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. The bliss of Brahman multiplied ten million times is not even one drop compared to the ocean of bliss the devotees swim in when he considers himself to be Krishna's servant. And the self-identification as Radha's maidservant is even more blissful than that. Radharani considers the kinkaris to be her own, my rupa, my tulasi, my maidservant. O oh, Swamini, I don't want anything else. 
but to belong to your group. Please take me by the hand and accept me as your maidservant. And Srila Ananda Das Babaji is riding in his great mercy. A little of this great aspiration should also awaken within the hearts of the practicing devotees. So what a wonderful scene Swamini sends to Lassi off to Nandishvara with Shyam Sundara's eatables. She's tightly hugging her. She says, Tulasi, go now. I cannot go myself. But I will be as much satisfied when you feed Krishna as when I would do it myself. How affectionate Swamini is to Tulasi. The practicing devotee should awaken feelings like Oh, I will not get such affection from you even one day in my life. My heart cries for getting that affection. Have mercy and keep me at the feet of your Rupa and your Tulasi and my Guru Mandri. Crying like this, the Sataka will faint and bring down the shower of Swamini's mercy. How mercifully Swamini keeps the maidservant at her chest. Such compassion as the maidservants enjoy cannot be found anywhere else. O oh, Swamini, I want to spend my whole life with the awareness that I am your maidservant. Srila Anandadas Babaji is giving us a wonderful yeah, it's a boon. If one cherishes this desire, one will indeed be able to spend one's whole life in this mood. So many times Srila Nandadas Babaji is saying only the thought that I am a maidservant of Swamini is already so sweet. And if we hold on this thought, in the end, we will get it. So what a sweet love, what a sweet move 
and we can just be part of it. What a mercy of these great souls. So the food was delivered. Mohan is even more sweet, even more beautiful now because he had the sweets from Radharani. And of course the remnants, they will be sent back the flying kisses made one way. Now the flying kisses will make the other way back. This is verse number 49, where I found another quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. It's the verse, O oh, Kunkumangi, girl whose body shines like vermilion. When will I carefully serve you the many kinds of remnants left by Krishna that are like an elixir of the quint? essence of nectar mixed with other eatables and drinks as you sit down surrounded by Lalita and other girlfriends. In a transcendental vision Sri Raghunath sees Swamini's sweet bojan lila, the eating pastimes. Tulasi has brought Shyam's other amrita, lip nectar, or food remnants. Even a fibr, so even the littlest part of Madan Mohan's Ada Amrita is Sukriti Lapya Pela Lava, only attainable by a lot of pious merit. Now comes the quote. Krishnera ye bukta she shatara pela nama Tara ekalava poise bhakyavan. Samanya bhakya hoite tara prapti nahi hoi. Krishnerya yati puna kripa setaha poi. Sukriti shapti kohe krishna kripa hetu punya. Se yara hoi pela paya se tanya. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Antya Lila 16 Krishna's food remnants are called Pela and anyone who gets even a fibra of it is very lucky. These remnants are not available through ordinary luck. Only a person who has gotten Krishna's full mercy gets it. The word Sukriti here means merit which is attained by Krishna's personal mercy. A person who gets this Pela is greatly fortunate. I think this is a wonderful point. Maybe I remember too less 
Every day I eat prasadam, not only Krishna Pela. I eat the full transcendental Pela, which was satisfied by Krishna, then by Radha, and then I eat. It's such a good luck we have. Such a wonderful good luck we have. Others are eating whatever. <laughs> I don't want to even think about that. And we every day, we eat this wonderful transcendental Mahabhava eatable. This prasad is relishable according to one's amount of love for Krishna. Radharani loves Krishna the most and therefore she also relishes his prasad to the utmost. Same madana mohana sakita noti jiva spriham. O Saki, this Madan Mohan increases the yearning of my Tengu. Govinda Lilamrita. How Srimati relishes this nectar is the best understood from Chaitanya Charit Amrita Antya Lila Chapter 16, which describes how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Srimati Radhika's mood relishes Lord Jagannath's prasad at Jagannath Puri named Gopal Vallabha. Koti Amrita Svadu Paya Prabhura Chamatkara Sarvange Pulaka Netre Bohe Ashudhara E dravye eto svadu kaha hoite ailo, Krishnera ada amrita iha sancharilo. Tasting these dishes that were millions of times more relishable than nectar, the Lord became astonished. He had goose pimples of ecstasy all over his body and tears of love flowed from his eyes. He thought to himself, where has such a delicious food come from? Krishna's lip nectar is infused in it. Mahaprabhu relished a little of this food and then told Govinda to tie the rest in the end of his dhoti and take it along. The whole day Mahaprabhu was deeply absorbed in Krishna's Ada Amrita. When the evening came, one star-like devotee after the other came to surround the golden Gora moon. And a stream of Krishna Kata took its rise. On the Lord's indication, Govinda began to distribute the prasad that he kept in his robe to everyone present. The Lord then began to explain the glories of the prasad. The Lord said, These ingredients, like 
cane sugar, camphor, black pepper, cardamom, cloves, ghee, spices and licorice are all material. Everyone has tasted them before. But now, these dishes have an extraordinary taste and fragrance. Everyone should taste it and experience the difference. What to speak of the taste? Even the fragrance is maddening and makes one forget all other sweetnesses but its own. The nectar of Krishna's lips have touched it and has infused the qualities of these lips in the food. The attributes of Krishna's lips are greatly intoxicating and their extraordinary fragrance and taste make one forget all other experiences. Just as Sri Radhika secretly relishes the nectar of Krishna's lips with her sakis, Mahaprabhu relished this nectar in secret with Sri Swarup Damoda and Sri Ramananda Roy. O oh, hero! Listen to the nature of your lips. They agitate the body and mind, increase lusty desires and destroy all other sentiments like joy and sorrow. They make one forget all other flavors. They control the whole world and destroy saintly qualities such as shyness, religiousness and patience. They madden the minds of the woman, attract the tangu and turn all situations upside down. This may be the work of woman, but I am ashamed to say that your lips are so bold that they even attract your flute, which is male. They make it drink as much nectar as they like and make it forget all other flavors. What to speak of conscious beings? They make even unconscious beings conscious. Your lips are great magicians. Your flute is just a dry piece of wood. But your lips give it a mind and senses and make it drink themselves. This flute is a bold male who drinks the lips of another male, telling the gopis, O oh, gopis, listen, drink your property by force if you think you can. Then the flute angrily told me, Give up your shame, fear, religion and come to drink the nectar of Krishna's lips. On that condition, I shall give them up. 
If you don't give up your attachment to virtue, though, I will keep on drinking it forevermore. I am a little afraid of you, gopis, for you may have the power to compete with me, but all others I consider to be no more than blades of grass. Oh, listen to the manners of these lips and other injustices. Everything that is touched by these lips, like food and drinks, becomes just like nectar and is called Krishna Pela. Even the demigods can not get one drop of this Pela. Who can fathom the bride of this Pela? By performing pious activities for many birds, one becomes known as a virtuous man, and such a person may get a fiber of this pillar. So this is how Radharani describes the Pela of Krishna, completely in ecstasy, because this is like kissing him. Govani, can I ask a question? So Niti Didi, always, please. Why is the flute of Krishna male? This would be a very good question for our Gurudev. He's busy. <laughs> so actually, the flute is calling all the gopis. And it's a bamboo. I would call it. It's a, it's a piece of wood, right? And it's a part of Krishna, who is actually the only man. It's so interesting, you know, why I asked the question also, because in many different books, not many, but some like in Venugit, also it is said that the flute is female. Hmm. And there Radharani's prayers or the gopis are praying that how many Sukritis did the flute do coming from the family of bamboo, you know, that she can always be at your lips. So... Maybe it's a bath. What do you feel? Yeah, of course it's a bath. How, how it can be not a bath? That I mean, it's sometimes male and sometimes uh, female. I think there are many different uh, uh, feelings to that, but I'm not on a platform to actually really can describe it but maybe somebody is here if you have some ideas and you want to share it then please
No. <laughs> I think well, it's... it was Gopi Dad, but now he's gone. Ah, okay. I think it's because of this uh, special uh, mood the flute is taking also. Mm. Because when the flute is saying to the gopis, give up your shame, fear and religion, come to drink the nectar of Krishna's lips. He's also taking uh, the part of uh, like, like a guru or, you know, like, he's telling the gopis what they have to do. Give up your fear, your religion, your shame. Come and drink it. And on this condition I shall give them up. So then I will leave the place and you can take the lips. But if you don't, I will just go on drinking it. So... I would understand that actually it's uh, it's like Krishna himself saying this because he wants the gopis to give up their fear, their religion, their shame and come and drink his lips. So that's why it has to be in this mood of Krishna. Yes, I feel also that is Krishna's words when the flute angry Lee told me, give up your shame. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's also saying, I'm a little bit afraid of the gopis. Mm. And of course, they could be added, actually, I'm really afraid of one gopi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the others gopis, just a little bit, but one gopi, oh, yes. <laughs> she will steal me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she can rip me off, throw me away to a manjari, and they, this manjari will hide me, and then she will drink this nectar undisturbed. So I think it, it, it it's definitely, of course, everything is above in the spiritual. Yes, because I, I remember in Venu Geet also there's one verse when Radharani speaks to the flute as if she was a female. Like she's so lucky, you know, the flute, she, that Krishna is always keeping her so close and kissing her unlimitedly. And if we could only be also like this flute, oh my God, too much ecstasy. Yes, so it's a wonderful uh, description of the prasad, and if we if we would try to, to, to make it even more sweet, then we could add that this is only Krishna Pela, the description. What about the Pela, which is then, the Krishna Pela, which is then taken by Radharani and given to us from mouth to mouth even? So it's wonderful. I have this old Radharas uh, Vilap Kusumanjali, which is actually uh, two parts. And the last quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita I would like to, to read and then finish here. And then next time we can start with the other half. And if we are through that, I have already the plan to see the connections with Sri Sri Radha Rasa Suranidhi and so on and so on.
So please join. If someone wants to take over and do something, some special verse or something, always invited. So the last statement in this part is from Chaitanya Charit Amrita Anjalila 18, and it's still about the Bojan, verse 51. O oh Devi, when I, while you are eating, lovingly and attentively light a lot of nicely fragrant incense, fan you or render other services appropriate for that moment. In which, which verse are you now, Gauravani? This is now 51. Oh, because I think you missed one. I missed one? I think because I'm still in 59, 49, and then the last one, in the last uh, paragraph, It is also Chaitanya Chaitamita Svarupa Goya Vitya Pati Gita Govinda Giti. Oh yes, you're right. Thank you very much. And you have some some thoughts or some feelings? No, I was just thinking that uh, it's interesting that Svarup Damada sang songs of Vityapati and from Gita Govinda. But it says, but maybe, maybe uh, you should read the paragraph before that, so we can come into that, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's still in the same theme. Yes. Sri Radhika does not relish the eatables. She relishes the nectar of Krishna's lips, while her mind is absorbed in remembering her extraordinary pastimes with him. In the Kuncha pastimes, she directly relishes this lip nectar. How many hundreds of loving moods doesn't she express through her eyes and her face then? Tulasi carefully feeds Swamini Yadna because she knows that she experiences Shamsundra's presence in the dishes. She feeds Swamini according to the pastime flavors she makes her relish. Swamini is mad with love for Krishna. It is so easy to serve her. That's a wonderful statement also. Is it so easy to serve her? Because she's completely mad in Krishna. It's not so easy. You have to be expert. And what is the the expertness? To always stay in her mood and serve her mood. So we have to be one with her. Bhavola Srati. Completely in one bhav with her. To serve her according to her mood. Serve the mood of Rata. In every moment. 
And that's why it's so lovingly described here how Tulasi is serving very conscious because every dish, every little part of this pillar is reminding Swamini on a special occasion, a special Lila. And this Lila is taking place then. So it's no difference if Tulasi is serving in the Nivritini Kunja in this moment or Swamini when she is with her mind in the Nivritini Kunja again. It's the same mood which is served by Tulasi. So expertly she is serving in this way. When Lord Chaitanya, who was greedy after the ecstatic law for Shirata, relishes this pastime in the Gambira, he stared at Swarup Damodar's and Ramananda Roy's faces and said, Where have you brought me? <laughs> <laughs> 